coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. It's a Plymouth, but not just any Plymouth. From 1953, that's what they call them. Okay. I think it was about three years they had Cranbrook. A Chevelle that's about as rare as rare can be. They built these experimentals so they could be ready for 1966. And here's why you may have never heard of a Beaumont. Because they were only Canadian produced, they were made for five years only. Plus. Clean that all out before you actually do brush in your paint. Fixing those unsightly little scratches in under the hood. What a nice little four-door Chevy. Yeah, well look again. Hey, wait a minute. Cruise in, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps and we're in Strongsville, Ohio for the Northern Ohio Chevelle Club's annual show. You might think, Chevelle, that's kind of a limited show. Not true. An awful lot of different automobiles fall under that Chevelle umbrella. We found that out today for sure, because folks from over 16 states and Canada in attendance here today. Mark your license plate, says it all, and opens up an awful lot of questions. Okay. 65 three-door. Yes. Explain. Did you buy it this way? Did Chevy make it this way? Did you create this? No, nah, it was my creation. Um, a lot of my friends tell a lot of crazy stories on lies about how this car came to be. But <laughs> yeah, that's fun. It was my idea. It started as a four-door, and I got the idea because I've seen a lot of 55, 56, 57 Chevys converted from four doors to two doors, and 65 Chevelles are my favorite, and I was just wondering if I could do it. And then I thought it'd be even crazier if I just did one side. So that's where <laughs> I got the idea, and I figured it'd be one of a kind, and a lot of people see it notice it a lot of people don't and that was just part of the motivation to to do the project and I, I love what you did because on the one door side you got different rubber you right. got different wheels right on the two door side it looks like something that mom and pops will be driving to church right. on sunday looks like grandma going to bingo on it, the, it does on the right side what was the motivation there just uh, just to make people scratch their heads and wonder if it was made this way and and I see a lot of people, they'll look at one side, and then they'll walk over and they'll look at the other side, and they'll notice little things like there's no chrome strip down the side on the left, where there is on the right. And it's factory, all, everything on the right side's bone stock. And I just took the chrome moldings off the left side, and, and they're stock 14-inch wheels on the right side, but they're 15-inch mag wheels on the left side. But the tire diameters are all the same, so the car rides just like like you wouldn't even know. What was the most interesting challenge of restoring this, but doing what it is you did to it? Because well, I, it's, it almost seems like two different projects in one car. Well, the, the challenge was, could it be done? And I took a lot of measurements before I ever started on it and got the hacksaw or sawzall out and started cutting on it to make sure I could do it. And I did the, the door conversion first, because if I couldn't do that, What's the use of restoring a four-door car? I was just gonna give up on it. But I did that first, and then everything else, you know, all the suspension's brand new, all new trunk floor, everything, motor, re everything. I did, and I did it all myself, except to spray the blue paint. What's the strangest thing that's happened to you since you've been out driving a three-door car? Strangest? I don't know. People just saying, I had one just like that. And I just, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I just scratch my head and go, okay. <laughs> sure you did. <laughs> yeah. Sam, your sign says one of 201. That's correct. In, in our estimation, that makes it rare. Yes, sir. R real rare. Yes, sir. Explain why only 201 of these were made. Well, I believe the story behind it was that General Motors wanted to come out with an answer for the GTO or Chevrolet and uh, they, they built these experimentals so they could be ready for 1966 to come out full production. And that's why the 201 were made. And how did you end up with this one? I found this one actually at a car show in Maryland and I kept bugging the guy until he would sell it to me. <laughs> Persistence pays off, right? That's there. right, yep. Now tell me why you thought you had to have one of the 201 Malibus made in 65 with this whole package. I had bought one originally in April of 65, a brand new one, it was yellow with a black top. When I come back from Vietnam, I sold it. Oh. It took, took me 30 years to find another one. Oh. Yep, it was for uh, 
high profile people, they told me. Nice. Yeah, and well, I was lucky enough to get one because I had ordered a car that they couldn't get for me. And uh, we ended up with a lawyer talking to them and that's how we got it. <clears throat> nice. Now tell me the differences in this car as opposed to a regular Malibu from 65. Different suspension, different motor. It, it actually has an Impala suspension under it. 11 inch uh, drum brake, power drum brakes. It's got the four speed in it, it's got tilt steering wheel. Um, uh, I can't, uh, it's an AM FM multiplex radio. It's got a tissue dispenser. Nice. Special tachometer, special speedometer, goes up to 160. If you notice on the dash, the clock is on the dash. On the regulars, uh, Chevelle's, the clock is in the center. And on this one, the tack is in the center. So that, that's the difference on it. Sam, how about the trunk? The trunk lid's got a special chrome across the back, and it's got, uh, I believe, the 300 taillights, the, the 300 model. Yeah. And then in 66, they came out with this? Full production. Well, you've owned two of them. Yes. How many have you seen? At the most, six. How many do you think still exist? There's 74 left that I think we know of. Out of the 74, I believe there's 24 or 25 that are restored. The rest are still in parts or being assembled. And your old car? Uh, it's still sitting in the garage. It belongs to the, the guy that I sold it to. No kidding. I'm still trying to buy it back. How's yeah. that going for you, Sam? Not too well. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'd be something special to have the car you had as a kid I, and have this one and uh, have two of the 201. I'd love to have it back. Well, yeah. we're pulling for you, Sam. All right. Thank you. Hang in there. Yep. Keep up the good fight. The persistence paid off for the original one. Maybe it'll pay off for it again. And it paid off for this one. I so. call them every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Rick and Shirley, I worked in Beaumont, Texas for five years. I thought I knew everything about Beaumont I could possibly know. I didn't know there was a car called a Beaumont. And I love yours. Thank you. Why is there a car called a Beaumont that I don't know about? Because they were only Canadian produced. They were made for five years only. That would be why. And you've had this one how long? 44 years. Since, since new. Since I brand new. I ordered the car from GM Canada. You guys are the original owners of this car and you still have it to this day. We do. Yep. That's wonderful. <laughs> the Beaumont itself is derived from a Chevy 2 style car in Canada called an Acadian. And the Acadian's top line was called a Beaumont. When the A body cars in 64 were developed by General Motors, they needed something like that in a Pontiac division, and they took that Beaumont name out of the Canadian line of Acadians and made it into a separate entity called a Beaumont. And it was in 68 that they actually called them SD-396 Beaumonts. Well, it looks in great shape. You guys have done one restoration on it, Rick? A total frame-off, bolt nut restoration. In 2000, I started it, finished it in 2004 for the 40th anniversary of A-Body Cars. That was my intention, take it to a show the first time it had been shown since it was unscrewed, and that was in uh, Grand Island, New York, and it won Best in Show. And if we wanted to compare it to an American car from 67, it would be? A Chevelle SS396, a Malibu SS396. Surely you guys have kept it a long time. We have. Oh, yeah. Obviously you love the car. What do you plan to do with it in the future? And, and I love the fact that you drove it here from Canada. You don't put it on a trailer. Nope. No. Never been trailered. The only time it was trailered was when the body was here on the trailer and the frame was over here. <laughs> we just plan to keep it for as long as possible. Um, we don't know what we're going to do with it when the time comes. Our boys um, haven't driven it, so. Never driven it. Never, never driven it. Never asked never for the keys. Asked. You, and how old are your boys? Uh, 35, 38. <laughs> and they've never driven this car? No. They've been in it when they were young. They had, we had baby seats in the back and they went for their rides and couldn't wait to go for a ride when they heard their dad started up out in the driveway and said, oh good, it's time to go for a ride. But as far as asking to use it, they never have. I'm shocked. Uh, we are too. <laughs> <laughs> It's an original Packard that inspires the imagination. People say there should be people on the running boards with machine guns. Eh, not exactly what I had in mind, but sure. It's next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. World-class collector vehicles. That's what RK Motors Charlotte is all about. The finest in classic, muscle, and high-performance automobiles. The design and excellence of the 1930s and 40s. The chrome of the 1950s. The muscle of the 1960s and 70s, and much more. 
RK Motors is the one-stop shop to sell your car, add a new prize to your collection, or restore an old friend to past glory. Learn more about RK Motors Charlotte at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruising, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. We've moved now to 2nd Street Northwest in Barberton, Ohio. Barberton calls itself the chicken capital of the world. And I can tell you from years of personal experience, it's good. But tonight, Barberton known for classic cars. Paul Packers from this era are so cool looking, whether they're perfectly restored or whether they're like yours. Basically an original Packard right here. Right. 1922, how long has it been yours? About 10 years. And how did you come across this, Paul? Uh, uh, my son's friend, grandfather had it. I didn't do anything to it other than put a set of tires on it. The tires were dry rotted. And other than that, you fired no. it up and away it went? No, it didn't run. Uh, I put an electric fuel pump on it. It used to have a vacuum fuel pump on it. And uh, those were, as they got older, got not very reliable. So I put an electric pump on it with a fuel pressure regulator and uh, cleaned the gas tank out and, and then it fired right up for nice. me. How often do you get it out? I get it out at least three or four times a week, depending on the weather in the summer. Of course, store it in the winter. As far as I can figure out, the car originally came from West Virginia, and then it was titled in Ohio. And it's in the 20s, and it looks like a old mafia car or something <laughs> like that. People well, say there should be people on the running boards with machine guns. and. So You haven't added that accessory yet? No, not yet. No. There's time. No. There's time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Put a <laughs> turret on it. Do you plan to do anything to this, Paul? No, I'm going to leave it like it is Good. and just drive it. I'm not going to restore it. Uh, fix what it needs fixed and just go from there. But so far, I really haven't done anything. Before I put the tires on it, I did have a flat tire and changed it. But uh, that's all I've really had any problems with. It's kind of a nice way to just enjoy the car for what it is and, and have a good sure time with is, it. sure is, yeah. We'll keep the machine guns off of it, OK? All right. <laughs> Charlie, as we get started, first thing, you have to clear this up. What in the world is a Cranbrook? You got me. It's the name of it. That's from 1953. That's what they called them. Cran I think it was about three years they had Cranbrook. Cranbrook. I, I looked at it and I thought of Thanksgiving. It has nothing to do with Thanksgiving. But I love it on your Plymouth. It's a good looking car. How long have you had this, Charlie? I've had just about a year. Barber Moose member and the guy that runs our bingo had it there for sale. It was a nice car. Uh, it was ready where I could go uh, cruising in it. Didn't have to do no work to it or nothing. Just get in it and drive. Were you thinking Plymouth or did it just catch your eye, Charlie? My wife liked it, so well, we bought it. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> Once you're locked in in that situation, you're good. If the wife yeah. says okay, you're good to go, yeah. right? I love the grill on this, Charlie. Yeah, it's all stainless steel grill. What have you learned about a Cranbrook since you've owned a Cranbrook? It's a, I like it and everything. It's for a flathead six-cylinder, it goes down the road. I can take 65 really? down the highway. Runs real good down the road, you know. I like it. I like. Uh, I'd rather have a Chevy. <laughs> that down there, '57. <laughs> now, see, if you owned a '57 Chevy, you'd be like everybody else. You own a Cranbrook, Charlie. Yeah. You're the, I know. You're the One man. Of a kind. You're the man. Yeah. You have the Cranbrook. I like it, Charlie. Yeah. It happens to every car, but that doesn't mean you have to live with it. We're getting the spots filled in because we're going to sand most of that off here in the next step. Under the Hood is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. RK Motors Charlotte wants your classic car. Let our consignment professionals take the aggravation out of the selling process for you. With an established international customer base, the RK Motors Charlotte consignment program has a 90% sell-through rate. Our top-notch marketing efforts have led to an average sale time of 87 days. We do the work, we do the marketing, we sell your classic for you at maximum value. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. 
Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Today on Under the Hood, something I've been wanting to learn for a long time, Mike Velick, restoration manager here at RK Motors Restoration. You have a beautiful car, it looks fabulous all the way around. Something jumps up and dings your car, and you don't want to have to redo the whole thing. How do we fix a little scratch? Well, you know, little scratch, there's a couple different ways you can go about something like that. You know, a lot of times it's just that one little thing that's bugging you. They sell those little touch-up paint bottles, or if your car's been painted already, usually a good shop will give you a touch-up bottle, so you have the exact match, and that's the case here. We have the color paint to do what we need to do to fix the car, and I'll just show you a real quick way to go about it. Okay, so Jeff, here's a few of our products that we'll use. I have a nice horsehair brush here, which uh, you can do real fine details with once you get it wet. It doesn't tend to leave the brush strokes. It'll fill a little better. It's a little more professional way to do it. So this is the way we're gonna go with. So all I'm gonna do is take on my board here, I'm gonna lay out a little bit of the paint to fill the crack, or the scratch. Make sure you clean the scratch out real good. Get any of the, you, all you wanna do is get any of your waxes, your debris that could be in there. Clean that all out before you actually do brush in your paint. Got a better chance of getting a decent repair that way. Okay, and now with your brush all filled up with paint, just nicely try and do it as neatly as you can. That looks nice already. Even better yet, you know, I mean, granted that it's kind of sloppy, it, it, it's a little bigger than the repair area, but that's fine, because what you want to do is you want to get in the repair area and fill it up. But we're going to let that dry and set up and we'll put another coat on, and then we'll move to the clear coat step and it'll all be good. We've let our two coats dry up, we're going to fill it up with our final little bit of clear coat on here. And again, yeah, it's not the neatest little job, but oh, we're Mike, getting this... We're getting the spots filled in because we're going to sand most of that off here in the next step after this tacks up and dries and you'll never notice it's even there. We're going to go to the wet sanding process. 1000 grit, 1500, 2000 grit. And if you're working with a factory finish, you have to also remember you can't be as aggressive on a factory finish. I know this has been painted, I know there's enough clear left here. But on a factory finish, the clear thickness, the mills are very thin. So you really want to be careful if you're trying to fix that scratch in the middle of the door because you could ruin it even more by sanding through. So, but this will start with a thousand to take away the majority of the overlaps. A lot of times what we'll put in the water is we'll just put a couple drops of a, a dishwashing detergent, a soap of some sort. And all that's gonna do, it just helps the paper glide a little more. Anything in the technique, Mike, or just be careful and don't rub too hard. Right, and try and keep it generated on the area that you applied the paint, but don't push too hard to where you're going to put a groove in. And then stepping down through the, the steps, I'm on 2000 now. Um, is just kind of taking out the scratches of your previous step. The 1000 grit did the majority of the work. The 1500 grit is taking out the scratches of the 1000 and then the 2000 taking out the 15. So again, it's just pretty much, and each one you wanna just go a little farther out. So you're just kind of working out those scratched edges. There, now we don't have a, uh, we don't have a deep scratch anymore but now we've got a little bit of a dull mess so we're gonna go to our next step which is buffing and polishing it back to a shine. We're gonna use our first cut polishing compound to bring her back to a shine. Mike if I did that I'd feel like I really accomplished something. You know if you really want to take the time, you could make this repair go over a two-day, three-day process. 
You could just go out there, fill a little bit. You gotta go to work, whatever. You come home, you fill a little more and build that up. Then when you get into that wet sand process, you can actually fill that scratch all the way up to its level. And because every time you fill it, it shrinks back just a little more. Well, once it's all full, you can get that so perfect, which again, wasn't able to be seen in a quick segment we have here, but that already, save yourself a couple hundred dollars on a repair and make it not stand out in your face like it did before. Under the Hood is presented by RK Motors Charlotte, specializing in the sale, build, and restoration of world-class collector vehicles. Visit our website at rkmotorscharlotte.com. Automotive passion runs deep at RK Motors Restoration. Our master body paint and mechanical technicians have decades of award-winning experience restoring some of the world's finest collector cars. Flawless paint and bodywork, highly accurate interiors, engines that run better than new. Each restoration is completely documented and finished to award-winning Concours quality specifications. From project car to automotive perfection, visit rkmotorscharlotte.com to make it happen. Now back to Barberton on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Gene, when I think of the fabulous Ford Pinto, I, I think of a car that a nice young man drove to high school or that Aunt Edna drove to church or to buy groceries because the mileage was so good. This isn't what I think of when I think of a Ford Pinto, Gene. What did you do to this thing? Well, this is, this is the fun way they look. This gives you something to play with. They're, they go get groceries a little faster. <laughs> Although there's really nowhere to put them in this thing. But yeah, I was going to say, what are you going to do with them once you pick them up? Yeah, well, maybe get them my, home quickly. At my, at my age, I just go pick up a prescription real quick. Change the carburetor a little bit. Put a tunnel ram on it. A couple of big uh, AFBs. Uh, it's got a crane roller in it. Uh, it's it's a 289, but it's really really healthy. I wanted something that really you just don't see, that nobody else has, and it still needs a lot of body work, um, but I've, I've got most of the motor done, uh, body work's next, and uh, I'll go from there. And how big are your tires? They're uh, 29. 18, 5 by 15. They're about 16 inches wide, I think. Yeah, but those were standard equipment on the Ford Pinto, Gene. Yeah. Ultimately, I'm really trying to work on an extended front end uh, that'll be 14 inches longer. And I want to put uh, fiberglass doors, front fenders, hood, trunk lid. It already has aluminum bumpers on it. So you want to look good, you want to get there quickly, and you want people to know you're coming because it's not real quiet. Well, it's a little noisy, but you got to remember it's a 289 high RPM motor, so. You're going to let us hear it, aren't you? Yeah, if you want to. We'd like to. Okay, that'll do it for the cars. Now maybe we check out the chicken here in Barberton. Always a treat. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte.